This TV well, thing. Welcome I'm back to Indiana. Oh, yeah. You're uh, doing some Pacer games. You'll be out in Denver covering that one, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back. I come back and do Pacer games. I'm fortunately going to go out to do the Denver game. But uh, Larry Bird and the Pacers are doing very well. Good to have you back here in Indiana covering the game for ESPN2. Now, uh, we got to go back to the interview Ted had with uh, with Norm. Talked about Jason Collier having a 24-carat game. Does that mean that Ted Kitchell had some three-and-a-half broccoli games uh, <laughs> along the way? <laughs> well, what do you think about well, that? Am I the straight man on this show or what? <laughs> well, you know, Kid has some games that were – I don't know if broccoli has anything to do with it. He has some games that were fairly decent. But I thought Collier – really asserted himself and I thought what it what coach did with him down the stretch was he had to play against Hickey who had four fouls and coming out of the timeout he took the ball to the basket and Hickey had to back off him I thought that was a pretty uh, significant point in the game you've seen Indiana twice now the UAB game where they played a good second half never seemed to really be on track although they won enough today what are your impressions of the team so far I think one of the things they have to just do is, is play a little bit like Luke a little more recklessly I think that's always going to be important with the team where you, you just you go out and play and if you make mistakes we all wanted to look at coach but at some point you just got to let him look at the back of your head <laughs> right. just keep playing. i like to, that. I like to hear that it's your kind of guy isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I, and i think that's what they have to do i think the junior college kids rob turner has played pretty well i think he brings something to the table so the new guys bring something to the table maybe it'll take some of the pressure off of andre because i'm not so sure that's been his problem he just is not a guy that works well under pressure we've had a lot of teams you and i played on some where we struggle at first november december but if they can learn from their mistakes come on january and february we went to the final four you're freshman year played to Bill Walton in St. Louis that's the kind of team this is work together now and then play well in the Big Ten yeah Laz I think that's really what coach is trying to do he wants to get a couple of lineups he can figure out to go big or small and figure them out here in November and December as to how they play together and then see what happens going into the conference because his emphasis has always been conference play and I think that's the same thing he, ha he has going on this year how can we get some of those guys to play defense like you used to play I mean I mean this is kind of a funny yet serious question I mean it seems like our guys kind of want to slide along and play defense. I mean, you used to be a guy to get in there, kind of, you know, bump the guys, control a guy with your hands. I mean, you and Grody used to get out there and used to, used to wrestle almost, but I mean, you, you really controlled a guy. You made him go where you wanted him to go, and we seem to have problems like that. Their guards seem to go wherever they want. Well, Grody and I were both football players, so <laughs> <laughs> let's start there. But I think also, I, I don't know if today's kids really think as much about defense as it has in the past. And I think you really have to, the hard part with a lot of these kids, and I'm not saying I was overly developed in terms of fundamental uh, uh, defensive understanding, but I was a little advanced. And, I, and you talk about Grody, I think he was. I don't think today's kids are advanced anywhere in the fundamentals of basketball, offensively or defensively. I think what they are, they may be better skilled, but fundamentally, they're just not as sound. What do you think the reason for that is? Uh, I know we weren't on TV near as much as they are now. They see that early in their life, and they want to be like the guy on TV. I think it's a lot of things. I think TV has a lot to do with it. I think there's the shoe companies have these camps during the summers, and these kids get recruited to go play in these camps, and coaches have a hard time in high school, they really the coaches are out of the mix, and I think that's a, a real problem we have with our grassroots program. And until we can get high school coaches to deal with our young people, get them back where you can control them, they they will become more fundamentally sound because you don't have to worry about correcting somebody. And he say, I go play somewhere else. India's next game Saturday, Kentucky at the RSA Dome. How do you Ooh. see that one? Yeah, Kentucky's good. Tubby Smith is an outstanding coach. He's coached well both at Tulsa, taking two teams to Sweet 16 there, and at Georgia. I think that's a game where you have to be prepared for an athletic event. I think it's going to be very much like Rick Pitino played, uh, try to create some turnovers, uh, flip you fast, push you back to the other end. I think ball handling, which has been one of the problems in terms of turnovers here with the Hoosiers, is going to have to be at a premium. Let's talk about that 1976 national championship year. I can't remember 32 that far back. and 0. No one has come, has gone through the season now since then undefeated. What are your memories of that great team? I, the team that you play, you and I played on, was a better team. Honestly, that's what I remember. I honestly think the team we played on when you were a senior and I was a junior was the team that should have done that. I now, think. Now you told me once you got rid of the dead weight, you guys. Really <laughs> <got rid of laughs> it. Oh, you're killing me! You're killing me! He was doing good. <laughs> no, I, I really do. That's what I remember about those two years. The team that had won it actually in '76 was a, a solid team. I mean, we had guys up and down the line that could play. But we weren't as deep as we were in 75. That's what I remember. I remember we beat Michigan here in overtime. Um, I think Jim Cruz threw a shot up and Benny was trying to catch it. It bounced off his hand and went in the <laughs> rim. So right. we go into overtime. That's what I remember. You know, it's interesting you say that about the 75-76 team because I feel the same way about the 80 and 81 team. I felt like the 80 team with Mike Woodson and, uh, you know, 
some of that that group was much better than the 81 team and yet uh, because of injuries and things like that we weren't able to win at 80 and we came back and went at 81. Now I understand that Scott May has a couple young sons you have a couple young sons they come back here for Bob Knight's camp are we going to see some uh, next generations here at Indiana? Not Buckner's. <laughs> I, mean, I, I love them dearly, but they're not very good. I have one that's going to actually come here next year and work for coach as a student manager. Uh, he's 18. He's, he's as tall as I am, and, and you you will not believe this, can flat out shoot it. I mean, <laughs> Is that right? I'm telling From you, you huh? he can flat out shoot it. He can't guard the sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So that'll be a turn. Well, we Scotty's got one that you may have to look for. Scotty's got a son now that's 6'4 and 13 years old. Eighth grade. Grader, eighth right? grader and knows how to play. That oh. kind of sounds like me, can shoot it and can't guard it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope not. Uh, Quinn Buckner, thanks so much for being with us. Good luck Thank with you. your broadcast career. Stay with us. We come back. We'll go to the press conference and hear what was as he has to face him for the last time. Indiana wins it by 11. Let's go now to the press conference. We have Coach John McLeod who began his coaching career at Smithville, which is a high school about 10 miles south of Bloomington here as head basketball coach. Here is John McLeod at the press conference. I was, uh, I was really impressed uh, with Indiana. We, we had a chance to watch them in the, in the Hawaii Classic that they played in. And for them to be able to come back after Spending time over there and play the way they did in this game, I think, is a is a positive sign for for this Indiana team. I thought uh, the key the key was early was that we got out and had a big lead and uh, they didn't panic and they kept their composure and got right back into the game very very quickly. And then we had uh, we had a scoring drought in the first half and then we came back in the second half and began to to play a little bit better again, but had another scoring drought and could not uh, could not get the lead back. So. This, uh, this Indiana team is a very good team. Uh, when, when Patterson and Guyton Lewis come off the bench, I know that won't be the case all the time, but that's, uh, that's an imposing bench that you have to, you have to, de uh, to defend. We did a lot of things well, I thought. We did uh, some things that wrong that Indiana caused, and we did some things wrong that were the result of uh, bad judgment on our part. But I thought we played, uh, we played much better here than we have in the past. We have a lot of young kids. We have five freshmen with us, so we have a very, very young group. And uh, we had opportunities. Indiana continually put the pressure on us with their defense and forced uh, 22 turnovers. We were very concerned. We were very concerned about that. And then uh, when Pat, uh, Pat Garrity and Phil Hickey got in foul trouble, they went right after, went right after them. So. That was a bit of a problem for us at the end. But overall, uh, I think you have to say that Indiana is, a, to me, a, a, an improved team and a team that looks like they're going to get better and better. And I think that uh, as far as our team is concerned, we have a, a, a Big East game Saturday with Pittsburgh at Pitt, which is the beginning of the Big East for us. And uh, we, we open, as I say, we open on the road. Hopefully we'll learn from this game tonight and be able to apply some of what we learned to Saturday's game. Comments from Notre Dame coach John. Of good things in the uh, in the first half, uh, none of which were in the first two or three minutes. But I, I think when we got down 11 to two and, and came back, and then uh, got down 18-13 uh, after that, and then came back again and, and got a lead at the half. Uh, we made. I don't know how John felt about it, how his team played, but. We made some individual mistakes throughout the entire course of the game. We make a mistake here or a mistake there that <clears throat> either hurt us offensively or defensively, but we didn't have the kind of uh, the kind of minutes that hurt us like in the Hawaii game uh, or in the Temple game where, where we would have a, a stretch of whether it be two or three or four minutes or whatever where we just didn't play very well. Uh, I thought that we played... I, was pretty pleased with how we played with the exception of individual mistakes and and we had that uh, really rather that <coughs> than weak or inconsistent play I think uh, at least after the first couple minutes it was a, a game for us where I think everybody uh, everybody contributed pretty well uh, we've we've had to uh, have had some concern about uh, offensive production, so it was nice to see us uh, score points. Uh, I really liked uh, liked the way Notre Dame played. Uh, they 
we had a tough time uh, containing their guards. Uh, they broke us down uh, throughout the whole course of the game and got buckets uh, because of it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's nobody that we play against that I like better than Garrity. Uh, I, I just think Garrity's a hell of a player. Our, our next telecast.